Welcome to the Women in Business radio show with Sean Murphy, connecting women in business around the globe. Hello and welcome into the Women in Business radio show studio. This is our second show of the day and I'm getting a bit tongue-tied. <laughs> It doesn't normally happen. Adele, can you do me a favour? I've got a bottle of water in that big flowery bag. Yeah, of course, I should have done this in the break, shouldn't I? So, um, I'm Sean Murphy, and my co-host is lovely. She's just opening opening the water. Thank you. Is lovely Adele. Say hello, Adele. Hello. No, I've just given you a bottle of water and opened it for you. She did. She said, "Hang on, hang on a minute. Hang on, a bit of a bit of a glug. Hang on." Do the side effects look? look, look, look. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> we got some, love that, love it. So, who have we got in the studio with us today? We have got, I know I'm going to get this name wrong because you told me how to say it. Now, all I can think about is the way that you told me how to say it. So? It's Katrina Fest, Fest, Festerazzi, like paparazzi. Did I get that That's right? right. Yes. yes, okay. Also in the studio with us today, we have Maddie, who is with us on work experience. So, welcome Hello. into the studio, Maddie. And Maddie is here. Well, she's supposed to be getting some work experience. I'm not sure. This is an experience, I guess. I'm not. We can give the experience. <laughs> yes, we yes. Um, but during the week, Maddie has also, she's been in the office. She's been using Canva to create images that we're going to be posting out on social media. Um, so, and as a photographer and writer, hopefully she's going to be sure she will find that she will find that useful as well. So, what are we going to be talking about in this show? We are talking about getting confident with having your photos done for business because Katrina is actually a photographer and she is the founder of Fast to Photo, and she specialises in. It's business photography, getting headshots done, all of that sort of thing. Now, I, ha- I have a particular problem with photography. I'm going to say this. I don't like having my photo taken. And there's a particular reason for that is that you know how most people – um, most people sort of have an issue with their, their sort of body image – yeah. yeah, and they don't like the way that they look. Um, you know, they think this is too big, that's too small. You say, I'm not like that. I think I look fantastic <laughs> until I see <laughs> <laughs> the reality. Because <laughs> the reality well, the opposite. <laughs> it is the entire opposite. You see, I look at this face in the mirror and I do Love something. <laughs> I do something with this face that looks me look, makes me look like a young Bridget Bardot. <laughs> And then the photographs are taken, <laughs> and I look like an old codfish. <laughs> and it's all—it's actually all sort of rather, it's all rather distressing. I've been having I've, I've been having my eyebrows um, redone this week, so I've been having a bit taken off because they settled in different ways. And one thing I have learnt is that having your eyebrows and aesthetic makeup makeup done isn't a one hit wonder. It's like a journey. Mm-hmm. It, it sort of keeps going until you until you get to the right space. So at the moment I'm a bit scabby because I'm having my eyebrows done. And as part of that process, the lady who does my eyebrows, um, Sherry, Sherry Bennett, thank you, Sherry. Yes, um, it sort of takes photographs. Goodness me! Well, it's the truth. I don't know. I'm look. I, I looked. About, I look like a corpse. Actually. I was going to say some of them do look like that. I looked on like them. a corpse. <laughs> I had great big. I had. I, I looked like somebody had punched me in the eye, <laughs> in both eyes actually, because I had like these some um, sort of. St- brown marks underneath them mm. I looked about 100 it was all very distressing and now I won't let her show me the photos I don't want to <laughs> see them no. I don't want to see them you Just take them that's them. fine <laughs> no 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 that ain't happening <laughs> <laughs> they're for her use only they're going nowhere else nobody <laughs> no, nobody else is seeing nobody else is seeing these photos <laughs> so that's my particular problem with photography I don't like having my photograph taken because what it does is it actually reveals um, bits of me that I don't really <laughs> like to be seen, to be honest. It's amazing, isn't it? How I think a lot of it is perception. So, like you're saying, it's about having that connection with what you actually look like, and that can be a bit of a shock for people when they see the images back. Um, and I think also a big thing is your journey through life. So, when you're younger, you might have a bit more confidence. And I've certainly found working with <coughs> women of a certain age 
their confidence does go. You think as they mm. got older, sometimes you would get a bit more confident. But when it comes to your business, but how you look are two different things. So you might be confident in your business, but not mm. confident about putting yourself yeah. out there in mm. images for your business. Mm. And I think a menopause has a, a big play on that. And obviously they all <laughs> agree with me on this one. Um, and, you know, when I look back at myself in my 20s, now in my because i'm 45 today so happy birthday oh happy birthday <laughs> um but at the time when the picture was taken i'd look back at it and i think oh god i look a bit fat but now at 45 i think oh my god <laughs> what? you were so skinny back then what is your problem now you're fat and when i'm 65 i'm gonna be looking at my pictures from today going you thought you're fat you are fat now you know so again i think it's that journey that you take yeah. through life and your cha- face changes your mm. body shape changes as, as women there's so much that change you know as you're saying you know you might need your eyebrows done you yeah. might need your lips because you're losing your lips we get that gray hair you might not be happy about or no hair. Gray hair or no hair yeah. exactly so there's all these things so it's it's i wish i had a magic wand my magic wand is my photoshop ability but at the end of the day i always say to my clients if you are having headshots mm. done you have to look like you the mm. amount of times on social media i have conversations with women and i've had a conversation with them for two years mm. and then i meet them at a networking event and, and it's, it's like, like whoa <laughs> no, well no they'll talk at me and i'm like oh, who talking, is that person they're talking as if they know me and i go along and i'm like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so if you have a conversation mm. with me and i look glazed over there's a reason because i don't know who you are yeah. because you do not look like your headshot and that's that's a big yeah. problem and i do a lot of corporate um i don't just do photography i do videography as well mm-hmm. so video is a whole different ballpark you know i mean just trying to get people confident in front of the camera speaking people don't like their voice mm-hmm. they don't like their mannerisms they say that you know they pull funny faces they use their hands too much i'm italian i use my hands all the time <laughs> i'm used to it um but it's, it's a hard thing and i think being confident um, if you can entrust yourself to, with a photographer that will sit down and go through your journey with you and understand you deeply, as um, we were talking about in the previous show, knowing your message and what your values are is really important when it comes to the type of photography that you want to promote your mm-hmm. business. And colours, what you're wearing, has a massive impact on how you look as well in the images. Mm-hmm. What we're going to do, we're going to come back to this conversation and we are going to look at how how you can choose the right photographer for you because there's so many people out there that mm-hmm. are doing photography how can you pick the right photographer and some tips about getting a headshot i think a headshot is a really good starting place because it it's comparatively easy to get it's the sort of thing that you need across all sorts of things if you're going to be using social media and it's probably the most affordable way of starting out is to get a headshot done so we're going to be talking about what makes a good headshot what makes a a, a bad headshot um but first of all we've got some little sort of introductory bits haven't we do you think we need to tell them how they listen to us again? Do you th- I, I, I'm sick to death of hearing it. Okay. What do you, should, we, should we do it? <laughs> Spotify, Audible, Alexa, Apple Podcasts, Breaker and Heart is the best way to listen to We're us. not going to say that thing about Heart, though. No. Um, and you can connect with us on... Go on, you can do it. With Twitter on Web Radio Live. Instagram is the Women in Business Radio Show. Facebook and LinkedIn is the Women in Business Radio Show. That's the best way to connect with us. And this is the second show of the Women in Business Radio Show. And this is the Fit for Business Mm. focus we have on this show. And Adele, he is the sponsor of one of the sponsors of the Women in Business Big Show. And who is going to be, as far as I can see, just dominating, taking over the Fit for for Business zone, actually, on the day on August the 25th. Mm. So you can see Adele um, at the Women in Business Mm. Big Show. You can hear her here as well. Uh, If you want to to become a member of the women in business radio show we would love you to do that and you can do that by visiting the women in business radio show.com and on there there's a little thing somewhere that says become a member and what you get for seven pounds a month is you get a premium newsletter you get all of the information coming out but the most important thing forget about that you get a big thank you because mm. we love you yep, <laughs> and you're keeping you're keeping us on the air now i don't know you might not want to <laughs> Perhaps you want to get us off. But what we're doing here is what we what what we want to do is to provide a platform for women in business to come on, to share their business, to get experience being on the radio, and for it to be affordable and accessible so you can help towards that goal. That would be absolutely yeah. fantastic because at the moment we we don't charge, do we? No, we don't. We don't. We do ask people to become a become a member. Mm. Um, <clears throat> 
I'm having one of those days today. I'm a bit snotty. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oh, we're fine with clean up. <laughs> and fit for business, we have one of our cafe. This is a local mm. event. We have one of our cafe in the calm events with the Psychic Health and Beauty Fair, which is our Saturday. It is at Raynham. It is the Lee Academy at Raynham, where we are starting our focus there on health. And in fact, Adele is going to be running the menopause workshop there, starting on the twenty seventh of mm. August. Yes, I am. Um, so that is a full day workshop mm. on what, what's going to be in it, Adele? We're going to be talking through, first of all, understanding without the myth what the true symptoms are and also, you know, working through the solutions. But it's real. There's nothing. It, everything I will give you is practical there and you will go away with everything you need to be smart, sassy and strong through menopause. So that's um, what we're going to do. Um, we have limited space available on that, don't mm. we? And it's £75 a head for the day. Yep. And that includes your tea and coffee. Yep. You have to bring your own sandwiches, yep. though. And I've got, uh, I can't cater for all of that <laughs> lot. <laughs> no, and yeah, absolutely. And do you know what? Pra- practical things and then ongoing support in the community as yes, well. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So it doesn't end there. No, it doesn't. We have a cafe in the Calm community. Um, mm. You can become involved with that. Adele has her own community for supporting women with menopause mm. and people who attend that become part people of part become that. part yep. of that community mm. okay let's go on to some of our um sort of our regular little features uh, about or, or just sort of some things that we've discovered during the week about ourselves have we already done what i learned this week no we haven't did no. we do that last time okay no. not to worry we'll um what have you learned this week adele i'm going to say hourly rate so sometimes when we are running around and someone mm-hmm. says, can you do X, Y, and Z? Can you go and wash that? Can you iron that? Can you cook? Da, 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 da. Actually, I step back and say, my hourly rate, it Please. would be better to employ somebody. And do you know what? Where before, I've been, oh, I should do that. And actually, no. So, and I'm applying that from next week onwards. This is my hourly rate. And if I'm doing something that some, I can get somebody else to do at a less hourly rate than me, I can spend more time on my business. And not apologise for it with people think, oh, you're working from home. Can you just? Mm. <gasps> I, I sort of, I, I've been adopting that philosophy for a while. But there are certain things sort of around the house that I actually, I, I don't. I leave it because I think actually I have to get up and move. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, I have to get away from this screen and move <laughs> and do something. Yeah. And so, sort of being practical, yes, all right, you can go out for a walk, but there are times when you sort of need to get on your hands and knees and actually do things that require you to step out of that sort of linear walking around um very often i won't get to the gym that sort of thing so if you if you have to sort of bend down and start hoovering underneath a cupboard to do something it sort of almost forces you into that but also absolutely but it's your choice I yeah, suppose yes, it's, yes, it's yes. your choice rather than be apologetic and do something yes. without but explaining I, to I someone. I tell you what, the, the mm. hourly rate thing, mm. and it's also really useful to apply that to things like networking. Mm. Yes. If you apply yeah. your <laughs> hourly rate to networking, yeah. then, um, and this is your one-to-one hourly rate, so mm. I use the, yeah. the rate that I charge mm. if I'm sitting with somebody doing business strategy. Mm-hmm. And... Um, if I apply that to going to just an average thing, mm. it works out that that's cost me about yeah. 800 quid. Mm. Mm. And what have I got from it? Exactly. Sometimes, actually, what I've got is out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's yeah. okay. I love that. So mm. look at your hourly rate and make, make a decision. You mm. know, are, are you going to do this yourself or are you going to get somebody else to do it? Yeah. What have you learned this week, Katrina? Well, I, I'm going to jump on what you were saying about the hourly rate. So my, I've helped my daughter set up her business. Yeah, she's nine years old. Yeah. And I sat down and worked out with her. I said to her, right, you, each, each product you sell, you've mm. got to divide your income into three. Mm. Yeah. So obviously your wages, mm. what your tax and investment would be. Yeah. Mm. And when she worked out how much she'll be getting, oh, so divide it into three. Yeah. Her third. Mm. And then she said, oh, well, actually, she said, mum, I've just, that took me 30 minutes to do. And I've just been paid £2.50. Mm. I said, well, that's not bad, is it? For a nine-year-old, I said you'd mm. get less if you were doing a paper round. And she said, "Yeah," and I did it in my pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. That's a win-win. so yeah. yeah, so I yeah. like the hourly rate. And I'm trying to get her to think along yeah. along mm. those lines. Um, but also back at you on the, the the networking because 
yes, I agree with you on, on the networking and you've got to think that what am I going to get out of this? Is it going to be the same in monetary mm. terms? Mm. But I've met some amazing people through networking. Which, which is why I said sometimes, on, yeah. sometimes it's, it's getting out. But you, I go on but, holiday with yeah. them. Mm. But you, you know? have to make that judgment, don't exactly. you? Exactly. Yeah. So some of, them, some of them I go, okay, well, actually, I've got a client booked today. I'm not going to mm. go to that. I'm not going to mm. cancel that or move that or, or whatever. Um, but if I'm around, then I'll go. So, mm. you know, yeah. if I've got a space mm. in my diary. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think what else I've learned this week. I think um, planning ahead is a really, really important thing. So um, we've got the holidays coming up and um, obviously I try and take some time off. Mm. Um, and I think just quickly going back to the whole monetizing thing, when I work out my hourly rates or my rates, mm. so to speak, um, I'm working on a 42 week year. Because I've got young children, I try and take time off. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so I think be working that into your strategy on how much you're charging, mm. working out how much you need um, over that, 40, whatever your thing is, because your work might be seasonal, yeah, mm. um, and really understanding that and then charging around that so that that allows for your mm. 10 weeks off, mm. so to speak, per yeah. year. Like and I think also making sure that your hourly rate is that you're not basing everything on your on, on just your hourly rate is that you look at the value okay, yeah. because you know for me my hourly rate to 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 work with me one to one is reasonably high mm. but I can't do I can't deliver that all the time no, it's not as no, high no. as a lot of other as a lot of other people's mm. um, but I can't do that for eight hours a day no, mm. no, no. I just can't because of what it takes out of me and so so in effect what you're paying for is you're, you're paying for the rest of the, you're sort of almost paying for the rest of the day yeah. because of what I've put into it. Mm. You know, and when you come and you pay somebody like Katrina to have your photographs taken, you're not actually paying for that time that she, you, start, you know, from the time that the shutter opens to the shut, shutter stops. Exactly. You're paying for all of the learning and expertise that went into it to, to, to get there. Mm. I had an interest, I don't do wedding photography, but I had an interesting conversation with someone saying, oh my gosh, my wedding photographer's costing me one and a half thousand pounds and this and that. I said, Okay, mm. are you just digital? No, you, so you've got an album. Yeah. I said, do you know that that costs the photographer money? That, so that's probably a decent album. It's going to cost three to five hundred pounds. Okay, so take that off that. Okay, a thousand pounds you've got left. So how many times have you had a chat with your mm. photographer? Mm. Well, we had a half a day with him. Mm. Oh, right, so you had a half day go through your guest list, and, all of that. Yeah. And he's going to the wedding. And then in the whole day at the wedding? Uh, yeah, okay. But what? Bridal prep? Groom prep? Yeah, so there's two photographers then. Yeah. So they've got to take money off for the second photographer. Yeah, okay. Okay. And then it takes five days, four to five days to edit your images. I'll tell you what, that, right? that person's okay. too cheap. cheap. Well, yeah. yeah. And they were like, okay. I said, so if you break that down, that's almost eight out, say eight days worth of work. Let's just put it out there. I said, how much do you earn per day? And they went, oh. Yeah, and they went quiet. I said, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. yeah. Mm. Anyway. Mm. No, I, I, I get right should, uppity on that no, one. I'm, 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 coaching and coaching. With the, oh, that per hour? Did you know? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And what that, difference has it made to you? Yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, if if somebody sits down with you for an hour and a half and pays three hundred quid, mm -hmm. and out of that they stop doing something that they would have carried on doing for a year, mm. or they start doing something that it would have taken them a year to realise that's what they were doing, how much is that actually worth? Mm. It's not about time, is it? No. But anyway, look, we're disappearing off down a rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. we're, supposed to, we're, supposed to be, we're supposed to be talking about other stuff. So let's... Um, what have I learnt this week? I've learnt not to get distracted <laughs> whilst I'm on a radio show. I don't know what I've learnt. I don't know what I've learnt this week. Um, we'll come back to that. Have you got a book recommendation, Adele? I have. It better not be. I'll tell you what, if it's him again, no, you're out. No, <laughs> You'll have to go and stand out in the corridor. I've kept this very quiet. It's better than that. It's my own. I'm oh. a published author in a book project. Oh, well done. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the actual, I couldn't say anything. It was published on Saturday on my birthday, but the when I leave here, the socials will go out. And it's Women Leading in a New World. And it's a collective project of 12 of us that have written about our own stories and mine is leading through a new type of change play on the word change there's some really amazing stories in there so yeah for the first time it's my own book yay <laughs> sorry I've got to do that got to do that <laughs> so I, you've, you've got one whoop okay <laughs> thing is though I took, we don't whoop do we I took Mr B off of the list Thank That's you. All. Sorry, Good Stephen Bartlett. I've got a bit of a oh, thing yeah. going on. We love Stephen. But you, but you still Sorry. managed to mention Sorry. him, didn't you? <laughs> no, my own book. My own book. <laughs> <laughs> Katrina, have you got um, a book recommendation? Yeah, not many. His marmite. Um, so Gary Vaycek. I hope I've pronounced that right. I'm mm. um, hooked. 
the reason why I like that book is because it talks about entrepreneurs' journey, their pitfalls, what they've learned, their failures, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I found it um, really hot. Yeah, some of the stories were, you know, you think, oh, I'm having a really bad day or my year's been mm-hmm. really bad in business. Read that book because it will literally show you actually, you know, people. Hooked. Are, yeah, hooked. It's an amazing book. So, so yeah. put it into context a little bit, maybe. Um, so I think it's, 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 it's more about other people's business journey and the problems that they've mm. had. Um, and it gives you and then he obviously then does some commentary about yeah. how you can get through that, mm. etc. And yeah, I love him. A bit like I said, he is a marmite. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I I I, I don't hate him. <laughs> I don't hate him, but I find him a bit not full on. But I think I, I think sometimes we need to step back and relax. I don't think the man knows how. To yeah, relax. no, I, yeah, I, I, I know, but I'm sure, I'm sure at some point he does. Mm. But I, I, th- I think you know, different people have different levels of what they need to do to make their business sustainable, and I don't see a lot of that reflected in in his mantras and what he talks about. Mm. And I think it, it's okay when you sort of get a bit long in the tooth, like me, maybe. Um, but I think for some people sort of starting out who maybe I'll say quite young, but I th- you've got to have thick skin to yeah. listen to what he's well, got it, to it's, say. It's not so much. It's not so much that I think, I think if you're not careful, if, if you just sort of take what he says and you listen to it and you go, okay, this is the way I'm going to mm. go. Mm. You can, you can end up, I think it's a, it's a quick way to burn out. Um, and that your expectations of what you can achieve mm. um, without t- sort of stopping or taking a rest um, are, are not reasonable. And I, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want one of my kids, for instance, mm. taking on board that. Yeah. I, I couldn't stop him. But no. I just love the messages yeah. that he gives to the community. As in, mm. I, I listen to his podcast and the advice that he mm. gives, and then the people come yeah. back a year or two later and share their stories mm. for me it, he's built that community and it's more the community that yeah. i'm interested in perhaps than it's him. just i don't want to work that hard no maybe not yeah, <laughs> perhaps, is, yeah. perhaps, perhaps i've got perhaps it's the guilt i'm going oh my god <laughs> what would gary v do but, but that's he wouldn't be doing it. this with the wine <laughs> <laughs> no. but this is it but that's why i love the book because it's other people's stories it's yeah. not just yeah. him it's it's, yeah. it's, it's mm. the others and that's what i liked about mm. that <sighs> Where are we going now? Maddie, we are going to be coming to you in a minute with these <laughs> ones. So have a think as, as, we, as we go round. So what is failure? What is, Adele, have you got a failure, a recent failure, something that did not go very well? I, again, it, it, was, it, was, it was delegating a piece of work and I wasn't as clear as I wanted to be because I was flying out to do something else. So it's just caused me some rework. Mm. And so for me, it's like, no, don't take that extra time to delegate that piece of work. Mm. Um, it was probably my recent failure. Mm. You know, it's just caused me some rework. I didn't need to happen. And you know, when you give the message, I'll do that. And you walk out the door and you think, mm, I'm not sure. And I wasn't sure. So yeah, mm. again, it, it's that for me. It's, it's do not give instructions as you're going out the door. Mm. That was a, Mm, you got a recent like failure that. um yeah i think i mean gosh failure is a difficult word isn't it um i think a lot of it is uh, you think something's suited for that time and you think it's going to work for that time and then it doesn't it's not the right time mm, if that makes yeah, sense yeah yeah so I'm i think like my that. example is more um we tried a promotional thing with lockdown obviously we've, mm. we've had we're coming out of that apparently and uh, <laughs> we're, apparently we're supposed to be recovering from all of that and there was a project that I put a lot of effort and time into thinking that we'd recovered a bit quicker um, post pandemic than, than maybe uh, we yeah, have yeah. and so I thought that this project would be timely mm. um, and it wasn't mm. quite naivety I think it was more hopefulness yeah. that businesses were more at that place mm. that they could jump on board mm. with this um, and it's to do with the workshop that I was running and um, so I think it was more of a it's not the right time yeah mm. and I need to mm. just park it it's not a failure it's a this is not right now yeah. maybe I've got my research slightly a bit wrong mm-hmm. and we need to put it back yeah to it like next mm. year maybe no and we were talking about that actually what we were saying with the big show last year is that Actually, people have taken longer to recover than we thought. That's exactly. Yeah. And we said about the big show. I was more. We was excited last year 
this year I'm even more because we were literally on last week's show saying actually people have taken longer to recover which is why mm. that must, mm. could be something we were talking about yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so I'm not being and don't be too hard on yourself no. that's my biggest message you know learn mm. from it sit back make some notes go why did that not work yeah. which I have done I've had a talking to myself <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and park it and mm. maybe revisit it because it might it just might be the wrong the time timing. yeah yeah Mm. Maddie, have you got something that's not gone well? Can it be anything? <laughs> <laughs> it can be anything. <laughs> anything. Um, well, yesterday I got on the wrong part of the train. <laughs> I had to get like I had to get like two trains. Um, or like the usually I get two, and I had to switch at like Faversham, but um, this time I didn't. But you just had to um, oh, like the to, front or the back yeah. carriages. Yeah. Yes, I heard the announcement, but. <laughs> It didn't register in my <laughs> head. So then I, I literally just sat there and then it got really late and I was like, I don't think I'm meant to be here. So I asked, <laughs> oh, I, I asked the couple, I was like, um, I'm going to Chesterfield, like, should I be here? And they're like, no, you're meant to be at the back. And I started moving towards the back and then the train was oh, moving. No. Oh, no. So no, then I sure. just sort of carried on walking and there sat another bit of the train. <laughs> And then just got off and like got a bus to another oh, bit. It was a bit of a. We've all done I've it. Done it. We've yeah, done it. I've, I've <laughs> done it. I've times. done it as well. So yeah, yes, annoying. I like that. <laughs> so a, a recent. It, it, this is what I'd call a slow failure. Okay. Actually, oh, it's sort of new. It sort of it sort of went wrong over a longer period of time. <laughs> <laughs> but I. As we came out of lockdown, I decided to set up some events that were. Um, sort of purely around retail and pampering, that sort of thing. So they were seasonal. They were supposed to run at Christmas, um, Christmas, sort of spring, Mm. summer and autumn. And I didn't really sort of sit down and think about how they fit into everything else (laughs) that I'm doing. I just, you know, they were just events. I run events. And the failure was actually a lack of planning and a lack of what is this I'm trying to achieve. Mm. And when I look at it, it was like something off, off of Sesame Street. Do you remember Sesame <laughs> Street? <laughs> Where they'd have these things and they go, hey, one of these things just doesn't belong. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was that. And they, I, they weren't going particularly well, partly because of lockdown, because people were going out of business, mm. people were still reluctant to come out. But that wasn't the only reason. I think they weren't going very well because I sort of knew in the back of my mind that this it's just it wasn't where I was going mm-hmm. and that there was actually an awful lot of it takes a lot of energy to put on an event and pr- promote yes. it and publicize it and I'll tell you what I was going like stink I really was um but I wasn't enjoying it but I just kept going <laughs> I, just, I just I've committed <laughs> I did yeah it was I've committed so I so I, I just sort of kept going and then it had to reach crunch point where I went this just is wrong Mm. And that's when I realised I wasn't an event organiser. I'm more of a community. I'm actually creating a community. It's an entirely different yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a failure. It was a failure in terms of my time. It was a failure in terms of everything else. But really, it was a failure of thought and planning and strategy. It was a failure to sit down and think things through. It was a pa- not a panic reaction, but it was a hey, let's organise some events. We- everything's opening back up. I'll do more events. <laughs> so that was my failure. So, okay, we're on to something a little bit happier now. So <laughs> this is about your superpower. So I'll tell you what, we- we've only just started this, and we are going to have trouble, aren't we, with this? Because how we get- you can only have one superpower. Well, what are we going to do? So for us, it's <laughs> what's our superpower of the week? No, well maybe. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm I'm not that super. <laughs> Right, but I tell you what, we'll start. So we'll, we'll have our superpower. So Adele, what's your superpower? What's the one thing you are totally amazing at? Resilience. That's right. And when you read my chapter, I'm not plugging the book, but um, no, it's resilience. And it's not. People say resilience is you get knocked down, you get you get back up again. I get knocked down, but I think about why I got knocked down. And what can I do to stop it from happening again and come back again? So it's having that resilience of whatever's thrown at me. And, and that's what people say. I've just got the song in my head now. <laughs> yeah, get knocked down. down. What's your superpower, Katrina? Um, I think it goes to the key message you talked about with confidence. I think for me, it's working with people. My, my um, 
my superpower is I project my confidence onto people because I have lots of it to give. Um, and so those that come into my studio will take a little bit of that away mm. and feel awesome during their time with me. So that is my superpower. Mm. And I'm also Wonder Woman. So that's you are, well, uh, if you're Wonder Woman, it, can't, yeah. it just means you've got very big knickers, dear. <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, that would be the menopause <laughs> and uh, yeah. the pelvic floor that Absolutely. we need to work on. So I've got, I've got you and I later, Adele. Yeah, I've got some exercises for that. <laughs> Maddie, What's is this ever a question that you have <laughs> ever been asked before? What is the one thing that you are amazing at? Um, no. Right. <laughs> Good. Good, because we wanted something that was just a little bit different that made people think and also made them realise that... We very often tend to focus on what we're not very good mm, at so. and we tend to totally ignore things we are very good at and assume that everybody else is really good at them as well. And, do you know, they're just not. So, mm. Maddie, what are you really good at? Um, maybe, like, working on things because, like, um, I sort of, like, see I'm sort of not doing well in something or, like, it's not going too well for me and then I start, like, trying to build up on it. So, like, my confidence, I used to be really bad like after covid i was like not confident mm. at all and i'm slowly like gaining it again and then like i also um wasn't getting the best grades in like when i was younger i'm not i'm not really too sure like year nine and then i've just started like working a lot harder for them and i feel like i don't know i'm just mm. changing that aspect can i also suggest that perhaps your superpower there is recognizing mm. where you're not happy with what yeah. you're doing mm. i think that's something that a lot of people find really difficult to do they're just like oh i'm not happy they're, oh, this isn't going very well but they just they don't actually know what it is that's not quite right so you recognize that it was your comp you know that your your confidence yeah. wasn't particularly high and then once you know what it is that you're dealing with you can sort of put an action plan in place so i think your superpower is actually the recognition yeah. mm. self-awareness Self yes <laughs> <laughs> As she was talking, yeah, I thought self-awareness. Yeah, oh, my yeah. God, Adele, <laughs> jinx. And, and <laughs> that, is, that is, that is, that mm. is amazing. <laughs> yes. There's so many people. I mean, yeah. even even now in my 40s, I know mm. obviously people are older than me and younger than me have no self-awareness. <laughs> so the fact that you're on that journey mm. now is brilliant. I, don't, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I don't know who I am. I, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> but it, that, that actually is my superpower which like an awful lot of superpowers is also my downfall mm. which is i can think on my feet mm. so for this radio show i don't need to send out questions if stuff goes wrong i know 100 percent it will be fine it doesn't matter i know <laughs> um i know that whatever anybody says or does on the other side i will be absolutely fine and i also do it at events as well mm. You know, if something goes wrong, if the tables collapse or whatever it is that happens, people don't turn up, you know, or last for the women in business big show last year, yeah. I lost three speakers at 8.30 mm -hmm. through COVID, oh, three speakers, and I'd filled them by nine. Yes, you had. Wow. And mm -hmm. that, that is, I think, on my feet. Mm -hmm. That is my thing. Mm -hmm. Well done. My downfall, because <laughs> obviously I couldn't just say I'm amazing. <laughs> I have to, I have to counteract it with bad. something. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I've got to, I've got to balance it out with something that's crap. Um, but, but the downside of that is that I, I find planning difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I tend to, I tend to just, you know, I just stand up and do stuff. Mm. So you put a complimentary team around you. Mm. Yeah, I do. I do. I, well, no, I don't because you have to tell them things, don't you? You have to have, actually have a sort of plan in place to be able to tell them things. So I, I find You're not psychic. What's yeah, I, I, yeah, and, and and so so yes, but I I think I think on my feet. You do. So that's that. We've done that now. Um, right, I think it's time we need to focus on the key topic today. So we're going to be focusing on um, getting confident, taking photos done. You know, when you're in business, I, d I don't know, there are going to be people who argue that you don't need photos for business. Um, and that's fine. I'm sure there are ways around it. But I think the easiest thing is to admit that we're in a, an age now where we have photos taken for our business. And I see it as sort of two ways of having photos done. You know, it, it, it's stuff that you sort of have to plan and prepare for. 
where you have a discussion with somebody um, like Katrina and you go out and you you make a plan. You say, OK, I need it for this, that and the other. And then there's sort of the ad hoc stuff where you get stuff done dynamically, you know, on the hoof. You're taking stuff there and, and you, you, you post it out and it wouldn't necessarily be something that you'd put on as a profile image or on a brochure. But I think there's, you know, I think there's a really good place for both of them. But because I won't have posed photos and nearly everything I've got, is like me going ah. well, of course you can't see that because it's radio isn't it? <laughs> That's um, but I think you know the, the, the best way of doing it I think is because if you are uncomfortable about having your photo taken in business it means that there's something else there's going to be something else underlying it mm. as well that is going to be affecting your business and possibly your personal life in a different way as well and so you're actually sort of better off i think you know grabbing you know, grabbing it by the balls and and dealing with the underlying problem and that's what we've got katrine here for obviously <laughs> once again i have a problem having my photo taken so guess what <laughs> I, i've booked the solution into the studio so um sorry just flicking through i do have notes um, plan. <laughs> yeah, no, no. What, yeah, look. <laughs> so um, let's start. I think first of all about the mechanics of headshots, mm -hmm. because it's my understanding, and I think I've seen this myself, that there are good headshots and there are just crap. And the sort of head. Why? Why would you get a headshot done? So I'm thinking LinkedIn profile. You might want to put it on a. On a, bro cards. on a business card, you yeah. might want to put it on a brochure. You might want to put it on your website uh, as a team, you know, a team photo, that sort of thing. And, yes, you can get something sort of dynamic and of the moment. But if you're not careful, certainly on something like LinkedIn and Facebook, we've got a profile. If you've got a lot of background behind you, mm -hmm. it actually becomes sort of quite messy. Yeah, you've got um, to stand out. Yeah. yeah. So the mechanic, what makes a good headshot? Um, lighting is your friend and obviously not having a cluttered backdrop as you were saying so you know people nine times out of ten people have got walls in their house if you're going to be taking your own pictures um, well, that's, i tell you what that's a very good idea so how could people take a good picture of themselves a, a good picture of um, themselves doing myself out of a job clearly yeah. so now, I, I, don't, mean, I don't think you are to be gonna close honest. tomorrow after this advice <laughs> no given today. no no i don't i don't i don't <laughs> think you are and i i come across this quite a lot actually with with sort of giving information away for free is there are people 20, who rules, yeah, there, are people, there are people there are people who are just going to take that <laughs> yeah, and they're never no, going to get it and no. there are other people who are going to go mm, this woman knows what she's talking about i think i need to go to see her and get whatever it is done so but let's go with the okay you're taking a picture at home yep. how you want to go on to let's just say linkedin how do you do that so i would there's two there's a number of things you can do so let's just okay so you've asked me that question i want a photograph for linkedin and we want a plain white backdrop yeah because you want to stand out yeah two things you need to use your windows so having your window to one side of you and maybe going to the range or somewhere, not sponsored, um, and getting some sort of big cardboard. It has to be big enough and wide enough that you could then either stick it on your wall with blue tack if you've got, you know, wallpaper. Mm. You're not going to want that in your, your image. And just having plain white. You can even do wrapping paper. If you can get some nice mm. wrapping paper, have that on the wall as well. Um, and kind of make your backdrop. But having it so that the, the light is... To the side of you, the yep, side profile. Now, one thing that I've, I, I, I do these workshops a lot is radiator foils. Radiator foil is amazing on reflecting oh, light back yes, on your yes, face. Yes. Yep. So if you've got a huge window, mm. have it on, say, the right side of your face and you're facing your camera. You've got the wall behind you with your you know, mm. wallpaper or whatever you're using as your backdrop. And then you've got the radiator fo foil, which is then bouncing the light back from the window to the other side so of that you've face. got so that as far as you can you've actually got some even you've got yes. even lighting yeah. now okay. radio foils are great because you can have them as long or as short as you want them you can cut them yeah some people use tin foil but i think that's a bit of a waste radiator foils are great because you can then hang it on the back of a chair mm. or, or washing line you know the indoor dryers mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah you could literally have it hooked onto an yeah. indoor dryer mm. and then reflecting the light back onto your face the only problem is as you've got glasses on today, mm. glasses are a big problem when it comes to taking pictures because you're going to find that it, the light, you're going to see um, that reflection of the window in your glasses 
and you're going to see the reflection of the radiator fours on your glasses as well. Yeah. So the best way to, to, to get around that is by just pushing your glasses just up behind your ears slightly onto your head and so that your glasses are kind of tilted forward slightly. Mm. Yeah. And that doesn't show any reflection. Hang on a minute. Hang on. So, yep. so I, I've got to take my, my yeah, what yeah, are these yeah. things? I've got to take these things Heads. off my ears so I can't hear now. Hang right. on. I just, want to, I, I, I just want to get this so, so I can explain. That. So yeah. hang on a minute. So your glasses are on. Yeah. yeah. So, so you, and you just push the, the back bit where your ears are. You push it up slightly. So it's, and then push your glasses back down. Right. So so basically, Let's you're pushing your glasses slanted. almost sort of slanted, yeah. so that they're they're facing towards the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. And that, that stops yeah. that that stops the reflection. Can you see that? No, you can't see that. Yeah. <laughs> and that that yeah. So that's my big top tip. Now the other thing is, um, women have, especially me. I'm, I've put on a bit of weight and I'm getting a bit of a fatter neck as I get older. Um, so chins are a really big thing. So posture is a mm. massive thing when taking a picture. Yeah. So just think about your mug shot. You know, you rock. I don't up think I've got one. No, so just <laughs> squishing well, neck together. Everybody, if we did that, would have one, wouldn't they? But it's it's, okay. it's pushing your shoulders back. Yeah. You want to see it here? Chin, you you know. want to see? It. We need to get. We need to get on video don't we we're absolutely <laughs> yeah. ridiculous so it's shoulders back it's chin forward so give me some brucey chin good game good game you know <laughs> like that and i always say that in photoshops i tell you in photo shoots i say the most hilarious things i really need to write them down so adele's now taking a picture of us now doing the chin so shoulders back chin forward <laughs> it may feel weird i say to my clients the weirder it feels the better trust me just trust me and then that I'm making up words. It elongates the neck. I don't even know if that's a word, but it's a catarism I use a lot. It inlongates the neck. I don't think. You see, this could be another one of my. I I think I look a lot better than I, than I actually am. It feels weird. <laughs> Hang Trust on. Me. Yeah, you're giving me something else to be so paranoid practice, about. I've so got I've got the very high I've got the very high forehead. Now I've got everything else. Now I've got the fact I didn't think I had a double chin. I wasn't looking at you when I said it. I was more referring to myself. But you know, take okay. it as you want. Take it on the chin. Sting. It all just week. gets worse and worse, doesn't it? No. But practice that and trust me. Take a picture of you normal stance. And yeah. Then, and even video, I don't think I will if it's okay. <laughs> yeah, but even when I see clients that when we do video work, I, I don't know if you've ever noticed, as soon as a video comes out, people up their chin. Do when they're talking, they're up their chin. It's like, no, stop, bring your chin down. Mm. And they do, they do this thing and their, their neck is slightly slanted backwards. Don't get I'm, I'm going to have to get a mirror out in a minute. Practice. And just check this. Yeah, yeah I can't. So That's what I mean. Practice. Practice your positions. Know exactly. And have a mirror in front of you so you can see. Mm. Or obviously, you know, you can turn your phone around, can't you, if you're using a mobile. So it, let's assume we're using a mobile. A yeah. lot of them now have just super, super cameras on them, don't they? They do. They have so, portrait mode. So so where do you put your your camera? If you can get, you can get some really cheap um, uh, uh Stand. tripod stands yeah. um, that you can then just but you have to make sure they're long ones that they can stretch and, and you can get um, mobile phone holders to go on, on the top so I would invest in one of them you can get them for like £15 mm. um, nice and cheap so it's cheaper than paying for a photographer so where, where do you <laughs> radiator foils and your stand <laughs> your natural light window your, your quids in and you can very often you can get them to de- do a delay don't you so, but where, yes. do you put, where do you put your camera does it go above does it go below your camera, I would have it just slightly above your eye line, just slightly, yeah? So you're looking at the camera and it's slightly above your eye line, yeah, not below. So you look kind of, but you're making sure that your posture, your chin's mm. out, good game, good yeah. game. Your shoulders are back, yeah? And the camera, so you can see it in the square. You should be able to centre it so you can, you can frame it. You can put yeah. on your camera, you can put a square. And you need to make sure that you're centering to that, but your camera needs to be slightly up. So it's slightly above, yeah. looking down a bit. Yeah. yeah. Not and looking up your own nose. N- no. And, and again, depending on what platform you're using it for. So for instance, if you're using it for a banner for YouTube, your phone needs to be portrait. Yeah, sorry, Ex- landscape. Excellent, excellent yeah. point. And, and if you're using it for Instagram, anything squared or anything like that, mm. or um, LinkedIn, then it needs to be portrait mode. So landscape for website banners or anything to do with a website or social media, as mm. in Facebook, but anything else, you would need to do portrait mode. So thank you for that. That's mm. Really super tips. Now I've just given myself all those tips. I'm going to be out of work tomorrow. So. I, 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 it really doesn't work like that. I know, does it? No. So um, I think that, that's okay. That, that'll sort of get you started, mm-hmm. won't it? But yeah. when you go to a photographer and you're having headshots, you get an awful lot more than really, I think, what you can realistically do at home. Absolutely. Yeah. So 
if 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 I came to you and said, "Okay, Katrina, um, I'm I'm new in business, or I need to refresh mm-hmm. my I need to refresh my image," um, what? And I'm I'm coming to the studio. What, what sort of thing would you be doing? What what sort of things would you be thinking about? And what about the other thing is is the orientation actually on the on the headshots because right. you see people doing all sorts of daft things, don't you? You see people with half their heads missing. You see people with like <laughs> three three foot of space above them. What's a sort of good? So that's sort a, of thing. that's the fault of a photographer called Peter Hurley. So Peter Hurley started that trend where you kind of chop off your head slightly. Yeah, um, yeah, that's not kind of my style. Um, again, yeah. So how to choose a photographer? You'd need to find a photographer. They can take the most amazing pictures. You know, technically the lighting can be right, um, and that person looks really good in that image. And you might see that image and you go, okay, that's for me. But then my advice is to find some videos of them working. Yeah, try and find their behind the scenes stuff and see how they're working, see how their Um. studio is set up. Because one of the things that I find with women especially is they're very nervous about having their picture taken. They're very nervous, especially post pandemic. People are very nervous of going anywhere new, leaving their comfort. They're going the routine, you know, the new. Yeah, because this is taking them out of their comfort zone. So try and look at some pictures of their studio. It's not just about the technical aspects of the picture and how beautiful the end product is it's about that experience as well mm. yeah so i have a lot of women that have come to me that have had a male photographer before and felt really uncomfortable during the shoot because they didn't feel that the male photographer um understood how to pose them yeah and one lady said she actually came away from crying from the shoot because she just didn't like her images because as we were saying before it's that perception when you see the image back it's not you yeah mm. now there's a psychology to that because I, and I did this with one lady. She looked at me and she went, that's not me. And I said, it is. I said, hang on a minute, one second. And I flipped the image round because she's so used to seeing herself in self-fade portrait mode on her phone oh, or a mirror. Okay. She was seeing left to right, not right to left. Oh. Yeah. So when you have a client saying to me, oh, I'm not sure about that image, flip the image round. You can change the image so that it's going the other way. And they go, oh, that's Do you me. Know, I hadn't thought no, about that. True. We yep. live in selfie, don't we? we well, most yeah. people, yeah. Okay. And, and I don't the ones, take selfies. No, but even in the mirror when you're getting ready. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. This yeah. is true, yeah. Yeah, so it's how to identify. So even something simple like that, if you've got, and this is a tip for photographers, if you've got a client coming in that's really not quite sure, mm. flip the images around mm. and they'll go, oh, actually, yes, I resonate mm. now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But confidence is a key to, to everything. So um, I would. I would try, if someone was really nervous about having the images and they said, look, I don't like my pictures to be taken. Every photograph I've had, I don't like it. I get them to come into the studio. I get them to look oh, at yeah. the environment. They, they know the drive down. They know where they can park. They can come into the studio. They can have a coffee with me. I'm not charging for that time. Um, maybe I should, but I'm not. <laughs> um, and uh, we're having a conversation and we're planning the content. As we were saying earlier on with the other show mm. with Lucy, it's, it's understanding what the purpose of those photographs is for. Yeah, Mm. you could have a a standard headshot for um, your business card, but that might not work for a personal branded shoot. Mm. Um, So really planning what the because, like I said before, I know loads of people that have had professional photographs done, Mm. but they haven't thought about what they're using them for. So what what would you class as a personal branded shoot? So so So, what what sort of um, actually in real practical terms here, what sort of photographs would you get? For me, I would I would define it as action shots so you doing the job that people expect because the thing with headshots is and and some photographers may disagree with this Mm. but um most of them do agree with me um when you look at someone's headshots on linkedin it doesn't tell you what they do yeah Mm. so and uh, there's some businesses some genres of businesses where people need to connect with that person say for instance counseling services i get a lot of counselors that come to me for headshots yeah so a a normal Mm. what i call mug shots not going to cut it they need to be sitting in their space that they're working Mm. from they Mm. need to come across as 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 natural and welcoming yeah not a boring white backdrop yeah so photographing them with where you would expect to see them working Mm. that's what i would call a personal branded shoot yeah Mm. so it's showing your wares it's showing what you do in a storyboard style so i always storyboard with my clients we come in i say yeah we can do the boring headshot because that's the boring bit we'll get that out of the way let's have some fun with a branded shoot and then we will storyboard that content okay what's it used for 
Is it a mm. marketing material? Because again, you know, you might be doing a workshop, you might be uh, promoting some sort of product. Your photographs to promote that will be different to maybe a photograph that you're going to be using on LinkedIn. So it's really planning ahead. Mm. If you're going to go to that time to have your makeup done, your hair done and all of that, women, obviously men can do as well, um, then you might as well use, utilise that experience and, and, and add on another hour to the shoot to get the, the images mm. that you need mm. across mm. more than one usage. Yeah. Does that so, make sense? So that you've got the whole lot. Katrina, mm. thank you. We're, we're almost at the top of the hour now. Thank you so much. I think those are... are a really just sort of useful, mm. I don't like to call them tips, but it, sort of for you to plan having your photographs done mm. as part of your branding and actually sort of thinking it through and how it can support your business. Really, it may not be forever, but how it can support your business perhaps over the coming months in the different ways that you want to promote it. So it's actually almost sort of part of your business journey. It's not just about going along and having some pretty pictures done, is it? Yeah. You know, so although we were talking about, you know, not, not showing, you know, the what is that flat? I don't know that thing under there. Well, I lost my words. But, you know, it, it's, it's actually more than that, isn't it? It's about thinking about your business and what you want to portray and the best way to do that. And one last thing just before is making sure that the photographer actually is fit for your business too mm. making yeah. sure that how they work is in line with how you work that, you're, that there's a values match yeah. Katrina how can people get hold of you uh, website normally so faster photo but it's faster photo on our socials so it's fast the number two F-O-T-O and you have you have workshops as well as we do DIY photographs. workshops helping people to do their own photographs and stuff yeah Okay, I, uh, and that is really so useful because there are just times when you want to do some photos as well, and you don't want you don't have the time where it's just not right to get a photographer yeah. in. You're there, you just mm -hmm. need to do it. Katrina, thank you, thank you so much for sharing so much today. Um, I, I don't know what I'm saying now. We are going to be <laughs> we're going to be back at some point. So thank you to Adele. Thank you. And thank you also to Maddie. So we are closing now and we will see you all next week on the Women in Business radio show. In the meantime, catch us on Spreaker, catch us on iTunes, catch us on all of the podcast channels and we will see you all again soon. Bye. Tune in next week to the Women in Business radio show for more stories, ideas and inspiration to help you grow your business.